I'm not sure how to answer this question. Okay, people just want to perceive themselves as not giving up on Christianity, okay? So isn't it most effective to just manipulate existing pieces of art subjectively associated with Christianity by implanting objectivism into them? <laughs> and the translation of that, go. How, how, do you, how do you make Jesus an objectivist? I, I, I just don't think you can take Jesus' story, for example, and turn it into an objective story. I think it's just got the philosophy of altruism too ingrained. <coughs> I think that's true of most of Christianity. Now you can take certain pieces of art. So I, I love one of my favorite sculptures ever is Michelangelo's Pieta, great in the Vatican. Yeah, it's, a, it's a beautiful sculpture. It's a beautiful piece. And it's Mary holding Jesus. But to me, who cares, right? It's a mother holding her dead son and grieving for him. And it's such a beautiful piece and it's so emotional and it's so beautiful. So you can give pieces like that content. You can ignore the Christianity because it's not metaphysical. The Christianity is not metaphysical to them. And I think you can use art like that, but I don't think you can change Christianity to something that it's not. I don't think anybody will let you get away with it. I don't particularly think it's worthwhile. What if, what if I, I'm gonna plug Jesus for a second here. <laughs> Um, what I mean, I think there are some elements to his story, um, like you just said, that that can be highlighted, but it, they are they they're sort of invalidated by the final sacrifice. But I don't necessarily think. Correct me if I'm wrong. That we could have come to our conception of rights um, without that, without without. This is going to sound very heretical without without christ's sense of individualism that he was trying to bring to the world where where he was <clears throat> sort of fighting the bureaucracy and saying look it's not the bureaucracy there's a direct relationship that you have with this being and you are the one that matters it's the individual that that matters every hair on your head counts um, and, and I think that lent a, a spiritual quality to the individual that hadn't necessarily existed um, to that time. I mean, you know, um, so, uh, so there's, there's individualistic elements. So there's there's anti-authoritarian elements to, to his preaching that we could probably use. And, and, and Rand, Rand agrees with you. So Ayn Rand certainly thought that. She thought the one real value that Christianity brought to the world is a sense of individualism that's that is in christ um i guess i'm not convinced so i you know and it's rare that i ever disagree with Ayn Rand. I, i'm not convinced that there weren't elements already in the culture that were bringing that to the forefront i'm not sure that and i think the damage christianity has done is so immense and so profound and so deep that i just can't let them get away with it <laughs> um I, I i you know so Maybe it's true. Maybe the only way that math <coughs> individualism, the only package it could have come in um, was through uh, Jesus. But, I, I, you know, I, I'm not convinced historically that's true. But we'll never know because there's only one history, right? There's only one past. There's no alternative universes out there to test different hypotheses. The fact is that he did transmit that. It, if he hadn't, would it have been transmitted anyway? Don't know. And, and I suspect yes, but because it's already in the Greeks and it's, there's an extent to which it's in the Greeks and it might even be in Judaism, which is where I think he takes it, but uh, it's, it, he does elevate that aspect of it uh, to a new place.